Morning, welcome back to another video on Echo Delta Delta Hotel, this time in English again. Um, Florence is still uh, working for his final exams, but since we are flying in the Nordic region again today, I uh, found a sort of Nordic connoisseur, he would never proclaim itself that, but uh, Graham has joined us today. Hello. Uh, you may have heard Graham's voice in one or two videos, he usually is controlling on Iveo or flying on Iveo over Copenhagen. And that s since over 19 years, which is just uh, slightly less than I'm on this world, just to put that into perspective how old Iveo is. Um, Graham, do you want to tell the viewers what we have planned for today? Yeah, maybe. Actually, it's Linus that's planned this whole trip and I'm just along for the ride. So we're going to depart from a small, partly military, partly civil field south of Oslo, fly VFR northbound following the river and then cross the CTR at Oslo out to the west side go back down south and do some sightseeing over Oslo finally we're going to go out a little bit to the west again before arriving at our destination at Yalpa. Thank you! Perfect! Yeah we're gonna start the planes and then uh, probably join when we are taxiing to the runway Seattle traffic Oski Yankee 90415 is an ultralight Starting up on a southern apron, we intend departing on way 30 to the S east of the FR. If you have a look at the wind sock, it's sort of a 90 degree crosswind. So we just depart where we have to taxi less. It's quite efficient, I would say. Put in the auxiliary pump. It's actually quite a short field. Wondering what military traffic is actually flying here. It's sort of a training space or if you can land an F-16. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, they just land on the road. They don't need an airfield. <laughs> okay, so I will put in the power. Shadow traffic, Oscar, Yankee, and 90415, taxiing on way 30. Shadow traffic. Just put in the power and then uh, depart. 1,500 feet initially and the left turn. Roger. Concur. Airborne. Have a look Wait. on the, that's the military part here. On the northern side. We now see the city of uh, Lillström, or however it's pronounced, on our left side, just in a moment. Really nice landscape, I like it. The sort of s soft hills, the smaller hills. Maximum altitude for today will be 2500 feet, just because there's a lot of Charlie airspace around Oslo. Okay, we I already reached my cru cruising altitude. <laughs> See, I don't get any... Damn, it's windy. Now let's actually uh, activate the wind vectors in this aircraft. Yeah, I mean, auto light, it always feels windy, I guess. <laughs> don't have you in sight, and also don't have a TCAS or some sort of system for that. We follow just uh, the river here, or sort of lake that is in front, and make a left turn towards Oslo Gardamon CTR. That's the plan for now. Zero three zero. Let's look out of the window. There's Lillström. And I see lights. I don't know if it comes across the video, probably not, but I see lights there. Yeah, now you should be able to see it actually. Now it's time for a little time lapse and we see us just before entering Oslo City Auto. <laughs>
close to us. Slow seat, yeah. Just down mm -hmm. here. Yeah. At a sort of... What is it actually called when it, the river goes into another one in English? Depends whether it's splitting or joining. Mm. I guess it's joining. Then it's a confluence. A co <coughs> yes, so... Uh, <laughs> That's where we at, and that's where the reporting point for Oslo would be, called uh, Form Sund. Sund? Sund. I think it's Sund in Norwegian. As you can see, I marked that on my GPS, just so I don't miss it. Yeah, I keep looking for Linus. I haven't seen him at all yet. Oh. It's perfect. Uh, the reporting point is just in between two showers currently, at least for my weather engine, which is the default one. Ah, I believe I see you at my nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, yes, I don't see you. Yeah, I'm just coming to the confluence now. Confl with an F it is, right? Confluence, not con... Confluence, Oh, yes. because it's fluid. Yeah, it makes sense, actually. <laughs> just before North Kisa. North Kisa? North, North... Let me see how that's pronounced. Yeah, no kisa is no fine. Chisa. Not she. What? No kisa. No kisa. Yeah. It's it's sort of like she. Kisa. Sounds a bit like cheese. I'm too high. I'm actually in Charlie aspect right now. That's not good. Cardamon traffic, Oscar Yankee, nine four one five is an ultra light. Currently three miles east of Norkisa, we intend to transit the, the CTR 1500 will cross the threshold or midfield as uh, required at 1500 and exit to the west. I think that that's, that gets, uh, that VFR pilots get to fly over at Scaramon too often. At least I haven't seen it yet. Next, um, that's by the way, that's the freeware um, scenery from Flights MTO. But it's it's perfectly fine for occasional flying to Gardamon. I see Graham just behind me if I look. Um, and also, there's a little, little um, rainbow. I don't know if you see it, Graham, but. I see neither you nor a rainbow. Oh. I do see rangers to the south. I've never flown here in a BFR aircraft. Maybe not. Okay, I've done many no, training sessions here. No, there are not many training sessions. Now. Yeah, there was a time when nearly every training session in XN was at Gardamon and I got bored of it. Delta Bravo Whiskey just passed Nanostat, leaving the CTR to the west. Gardamon, Oscar, Yankee, 9415, overhead the airport will exit the CTR to the west via Rashon. Oh, that's actually quite scary here because the mountains go up to 1, uh, 2,100 feet. Yeah, but like I said, the, the Charlie is only from 3,000, so there is space. Okay, I will climb up to that quite quickly now. Let's put in power and a uh, bit of a higher climb rate. Interesting how it's so more mountainous around this area. Yep. Well, I see your lights. I don't actually see you at my 11 o'clock. And then going left. Oh, it's really scary this high. Uh, with, with the mountains this high. Gardamon traffic, Delta Mike Romeo Bravo Whiskey just passed Raschion. We are now in Baunholm calling and thereafter Oslo City Center for sightseeing. Gardamon traffic, Oslo Yankee 9 at 415, now exiting CTR to the west on track Raschion. We have the other ultralight now in sight at our 10 o'clock. Perfect. I will follow this sort of um, river or motorway that you can find in the sort of little valley, so I don't, I'm too close to the mountains. When do I have to do 
2,500 feet again. Nowhere. Oh yeah, you're co you you're correct. Oh no, um, GMA down here. All the rest of our route is only three thousand and above. Now we have a short two thousand five hundred. Charlie uh, airspace at Ferris GMA over uh, um, at at Svel Svelvik. Svelvik? Svelvik. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of meant before Damon up to Damon. It's three thousand and. Is it Damon? Isn't it Drummond? Yeah. My propeller shut down. Oops. Pen, 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 pen. Yeah, no problem. Okay, why doesn't it? Are you? What's the problem? Mm. Oh. I know what the problem is. Oh, I see. Yeah. I know what the problem is. Add a fuel? Exactly. Oops. <laughs> okay. Yeah, do you need to land it, Sheila? <laughs> no. I oh. just refueled. <coughs> there was Head a mysterious cloud of fuel through which I flew. Yeah. Opened the scoop and scooped it up. Nice job. Yes, yes. Norway, the land of fuel. I didn't see you still. It was quite close, actually. I mean, I could have landed, but I think I have a teaser for the episode. Yeah, there was a bit of a um, let's let's a bit of a lazy. Um, Work around. At least you probably have a fuel gauge in your aircraft. I don't. You don't? Not as such, no. I have little insets in the wings where I can see a transparent section of the fuel inlet pipe which shows the actual level by looking at what's in the in the pipe. I will do a little sort of little um, detour over Holmcoin here and explain a bit. So that's the Holmkorn Ski Tower, where the Norwegian Ski Museum is also located. I went there when I was in Oslo 2018, which was really cool because it was an exchange trip for a school orchestra and I got to live just, I think, on this sort of mountain with view in the Oslo Fjord, really, really nice. And uh, yeah, that's where usually all the ski jumping and biathlon and, and Ski running stuff is held just here. Looks quite nice for a ski jumping tower actually. You can go up there on good weather, up the top of the, uh, the tip of the tower and, and look around also. I'm also there just passing by that point about two miles to the east. Uh, I will have a look out. By the way, you probably see this on the map, there would be a lot of restricted areas around Oslo here, but they are not active on our way and the only ones we are staying out are the circle. Restricted area here and this one. Just... <laughs> I mean, there are only virtual inhabitants, so... I guess... Uh, that's, that's okay. Also makes for a good video. Actually, w Graham, have you ever been in, uh, to Oslo? Only one time. One time? Okay. Same as me then. Yeah. I... Maybe I was in the wrong part, but the part I saw from, from the city I didn't look... I mean, it wasn't too pretty. <laughs> I don't know how, how no, you I felt about it. I don't remember it being a pretty city, but there's some impressive architecture. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, let's put it there. Including right. the opera building, for example, which is oh, well yes. worth a visit. I think it should be below me somewhere. Yeah, there it is. There it is. That's the opera house. I think you're less than a mile away and I can't see you, so something's gone wrong with them. It's, uh... I saw you at least. I'm now just passing the opera. 
dam already passed the upper and also well over the water, so I guess. Should be just below us. Maybe we can spot it. Yes, there it is. What is it actually? It's a museum about Vikings, probably. <laughs> I, I wasn't there. I was in the Nobel Prize, a Peace Prize museum. It was quite good. We had a good guide there. It actually was an experience, if you think about it. I was in eighth grade, I think. You know, I I had English for five or three three or four years at that point let's do not count the elementary school because that's basically just learning colors and that sort of stuff and then you know i lived with a friend of mine i lived with with a norwegian family for for three for four days i think everything in english it's it's a learning experience that's the color line you know that's the that's the ferry which with, with, with what we arrived have you spotted the um, the palace? Oh, I've spotted it. But I just spotted it. The Kungelik slot. Kungelik. Kungen is no Kungen is also Danish, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And Danes actually have a king now, which they haven't had for a very long time. Oh yes, Mr. Was it Frederick or the other name? It is Frederick. Yes. It is Frederick. What would be the other one, Frederick? Um, Christian. Christian, yeah. Okay. okay, I sort of, um, I finished my, my second circle. Yep. Or the, my I'm entire back circle. And back to the ski hop. The ski hop. Um, shall we now leave then and go off towards yeah, that's the Yeah, that was my plan, yes. Okay. Just and fly over the harbor to this little island. There should be a, maybe we see it, maybe it's modeled in the scenery. Or in the photo of, uh, photogrammetry. Lighthouse on the fjord. Which is called um, Style in the Fjord. Okay, fl I'm flying a bit more west, heading to Five yeah. Zero. I see you there. Perfect. Okay, so our next station on our visit down the Oslo Fjord will be Drammen, which is if you are really correct, not along the Oslo Fjord, but Drummond's Fjord. I, I thought it would be nice to visit because it's sort of next to Oslo, the biggest city. I think there's also a little um, sightseeing platform. It's actually not, not, not little, it's quite high up, called uh, Trollstigen. Yeah, those wizards, they're walking everywhere. You can't move for stepping on a wizard in southern Norway. What does Holmen mean? Ha mean have in Norwegian? Is it? Oh, Stockholm. Is okay. I mean, Stockholm is not Norwegian. Just to be sure, I know that. No, Holmen <laughs> means island. The island. No, but it's the same thing. The stock is like this uh, very old castle structure that you can make a circle that you make by putting wooden stakes into the ground. That's a stock. So it's a very elementary castle. And they built one of those on a small island in the harbour of what we now call Stockholm, and that's why the city is called Stockholm. Ah, see? It's a real Graham. Good tour guide. I do not regret uh, inviting you on this flight. I mean, uh, otherwise we also wouldn't have, but... Mm. That should be the island where the little lighthouse is, but yeah, you can't see it properly. I also remember waking up on the ferry to Oslo um, on a winter day and, y and you go up out on the deck and then everything, the entire Oslo fort is covered in snow. That was really, really nice. Probably put some, some videos in here. That's exciting uh, stuff about uh, VFR flying. Huh? You don't have a T-Cast, you have to look out. Yeah, especially as I'm flying an aircraft with no autopilot and no uh, fuel gauge and no easily accessible compass. Yeah. You kind of like have to stand up in a seat and uh, look above your head to see the compass. If you can't work it out from the GPS. It's maybe where, where eye tracking would be beneficial. <laughs> but there's a GPS so I can see what I'm tracking all the time. Yeah. 
I'm tracking parallel on your um, about nine o'clock on your left hand side. Oh yeah, I have you exactly at 9 o'clock, I, I see you. Um, just in a second I will do the left turn, when I'm overhead okay. the um, soccer field you can see down there, or the sort of arena. Yeah. Or the, or, or the, uh, the island and the river, I will just follow over the river. Yeah, I'm kind of between the football field and the island right now, but on the south bank. I think probably you're just against white cloud, that's why I can't see you. Yeah, maybe. I'm just uh, overhead the river now. So okay. it should be no problem for you to turn in. I'm, I'm heading. I'm going to do a U-turn now. Mm. Make a U-turn. Recalculating. <laughs> Recalculating route. <laughs> Imagine sitting in an Airbus and then hearing that. <laughs> when able, make a U-turn. Arriving at destination below. Hmm. That's really scenic. Maybe one day. Uh, I will also fly somewhere more north, where the mountains are higher. Maybe from, um, I don't know, maybe at Molde to Augekassen or something. Okay, so we're now arriving to our destination, Jarlsberg, which is in the CTR of um, Torp or Sandefjord, I can't remember Tango or Oscar. Actually, it might be split the CTR, it's not very clear on this chart that I have. So uh, we're just um, between two CTRs, the one of Moss and oh, Rige, and the one of Torp, which is uh, this one. Just uh, enter the city via visual reporting point Turnsberg and then land runway 36, which is a really short base. And I think that's where the airfield is. It's a small general aviation airfield with a model, also with a model plane strip. So that's what Graham and I are going to do now. And talk traffic, Oski Yankee 90415, ultralight aircraft, approximately 5 miles northeast of Tonsberg, entering top CTR at Tonsberg to land runway 36 at Yarsberg. That would be really, really, really tight. I don't see the airport actually. I see the airport now. Okay, I no. need to lose speed. <laughs> I definitely need to lose speed, but that's quite easy in this sort of uh, small aircraft. Let's head west, so we're in a proper base for that runway down there. And let's not land on the model plane strip, but on the runway intended for general aviation aircraft. That's a steep approach I'm doing here. Should be fine, brakes are good. Okay, I'm not inside. Okay, in case of go around, I will just do a left pattern. Watch you. I think that's the smartest thing to do. Yeah. quite good. Airfield in sight. Over the numbers. Ah. Ah. Yeah, with traffic Oscar and Kinana 415 right base from way 36 full stop. Stopped. Uh, I 
I didn't stop, but I decelerated enough, let's put it that way. Ja, zwar Traffic, Delta Bravo, Whiskey, Vacated, Runway 36. Okay, let's watch Graham land. Oh, didn't really like the crosswind. That leg looked okay with the Iveo leg. Some nice cinematics. <laughs> Always good. Where are you from? So that's it for this flight. Thanks for Graham for joining me. It was quite an eventful flight to say at last. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me along. That was fun. Maybe you have a suggestion where you could fly next in the Nordics. Leave that down in the comments. And uh, if you liked the video, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.